It was a case of more planes, more food, more raw materials, shipped without pause from eight different airfields in the western zone. Month after month, the tempo of flights was stepped up, and by Christmas, American and British planes had made 100,000 trips and carried a total of 730,000 tons into Berlin. Even cars were transported. But coal, equally as vital to Berlin as bread, was the greatest load of all. Over one million tons had now been flown in. As an additional boost to the airlift, the RAF introduced its Hastings, each carrying over nine tons. At the three airports in Berlin, Gatow, Tempelhof and Tegel, aircraft were landing or taking off every 90 seconds. Many notabilities visited Berlin to see the workings of this magnificent achievement and to praise the great work of the British and American ground and air personnel. Chief of the Air Staff, Lord Tedder. And the Foreign Secretary, Mr. Bevin, whose diplomacy was much aided by the success of the airlift. He added his tribute when he visited Berlin on the eve of the lifting of the blockade in May 1949. For ten whole months, a ceaseless stream of Allied aircraft landed in Berlin, where Germans, supervised by British Army personnel, eagerly unloaded the vital supplies. Air crews of the RAF and Commonwealth crews from Australia, New Zealand and South Africa, together with their British charter colleagues, all of them played their part with the United States Air Force in maintaining this non-stop operation. A combined operation which on one day landed in Berlin a record load of nearly 13,000 tons. That is equivalent to the normal tonnage moved daily by surface transport before the blockade. Newsprint for Berlin's democratic press comes in. Mail for the outside world goes out. Life of Berlin has been maintained, but not without the loss of 43 airmen.